there, it's Debbie. Super happy to have you with us again this week for our weekly training video. And our topic this week is what we call pop-up games. Not to be confused with the game called pop-up or you may have seen our training resources, uh, two other games called the pop-up sit and pop-up down. This is, and I think the best way to describe what it is, is if you think about when you go to a shopping mall or anywhere where there's retail environments, the pop-up kiosk. It's there one day and it's not the next, or it's there one week and it's not the next. That's how we think about our pop-up games. They're things that just kind of show up. Now, that we have four basic rules that make a pop-up game actually a pop-up game. And the first one is that your setup and your takedown and your actual execution time, the time that you're actually training your dog, working with your dog, doesn't exceed five minutes. And that's super key, and you guys have heard me say all the time, we're always talking about moments, the power of moments. Moments are the secret sauce to absolutely anything. There's a reason that this dog down here, his call name is Moment. His registered name is Old Sod's Moment in Time. And that's what it's all about. It's about moments for excellence. So think about your pop-up game as something that you're going to do. Start, get ready, start, finish, take down, done in under five minutes. The second thing is that it has to fit into what we call the one and done concept. And you'll see how this works as we get going. But one and done means you're not going to start something, and this happens all the time in training. You're not going to start something and then you're going to say, oh, well, I'm going to try this and I'm going to try that. This is a one and done. You're going with one game. You're giving it one shot with a few repetitions, if, if you know, with a few repetitions in there and, and so on. But there's no progression. There's no, oh, I think I'm going to take it to the next level. It's one and done. You've got this one training session. This is what you're going in to do. This is what you're going to do. You're not going to grow it. Okay? Now, number three is that it must have some point to it. So you have to either be training a particular part of the dog's body or adding an additional challenge. Okay, so when I say part of a dog's body, I mean physical or mental. So if you've got a game that you want to try and you just want to do it with one little tweak, that would be adding a mental challenge to it, that's cool. Okay, or you want to do an exercise that's just working the left front foot or the front feet, something like that. It must have some purpose in the world of overall wellness of the dog. And the final one is that you must be able to do your pop-up game anywhere. That's the key to pop-ups. It's like the pop-up kiosk. They don't need a building and a lease and utilities and phone lines and all that sort of stuff. They have a package of stuff that comes in a trailer, it arrives at the shopping mall, They bring it in, they pop it up, they're ready, they put their stock in, they're ready to go. Pop-up games are the same thing. You've got to be able to do it anywhere. So, for example, if you were thinking you were going to do it with a climb, I would suggest that that probably isn't a pop-up game. Because a pop-up game, you can't, the climb just does it. You, unless you have a climb in your car, you have a climb, it just doesn't work. Now, I've got three uh, three channels that we're going to talk about here in my funky colors and we're going to talk about why we use a pop-up game, how do you create a pop-up game and what not to do in a pop-up game. So the important pieces of why you would ever want to use a pop-up game is it's key to advancing your conditioning for the dog and it's also key to advancing the understanding and your training for the dog. So the first piece that's really, really, really important is, let me get this off of here, time. Time in our busy lives, sometimes the first thing that goes in our lives is our gym time. 
our gym time. The thing that is the most important in our entire life is the wellness of our body. And as we're coming up to the end, the end of the year, we all know that time is the thing that tends to go. But we second to that is our strategic dog training time. And what ends up happening is our dog training becomes either non-existent or it becomes non-strategic. So this has some strategy to it. There's a reason to, to do it. Um, so that's important. There's a pop-up game because it's under five minutes, under five minutes, you can do pop-up games once, twice, ten times a day without intruding on your life and without kicking other things out of the way. So that's really, really uh, an important piece. That's why we love our pop-up games. Number two is that it uses a concept called scarcity to build anticipation. So what is scarcity and how does it work with a pop-up with a pop-up game? Scarcity means and it's what causes everybody to buy stuff um, and why you want to buy things, you know, when people say there's only a couple of days left or there's a couple of hours left or this price disappears at a certain point in time. That's a concept of scarcity. It's a, it's a trigger. And we use that concept with our dogs. So we're giving them training. We're giving them something that they're really enjoying, that's good for them, that feels good, that makes them happy, that makes us happy, that really is a positive all the way around, but we're strategically taking it away. That builds anticipation because they don't know. Pop-up games are surprises. Now, why is that important? Because that builds drive. It builds desire and it builds I want to do this. They love doing this this stuff when you do it that way. I've got equipment, canine, I've got canine conditioning equipment. I've got all sorts of equipment. I cannot barely get it to the floor without a dog trying to stand on it. They want to do it that much. Now, what's our fourth one? Our fourth one is that by doing pop-up games, because we go into it, the very specific thing that we want to do. It helps teach the dog how things can be clear, how it's understandable, and they're clean. We don't mess it up because one of our challenges in training is that we get so much crap attached to it. You know, we, they start doing something and it doesn't work and we add this and we add that and, and my Ducati is a perfect example of what happens when you mess it up. So pop-up games because it's a nice, neat, tidy little package. It's clean, it's clear and thus builds clarity and thus builds confidence and that makes it super understandable. Add that to the element of surprise and anticipation, you've got an amazing game. Now the last one in our why we would use a pop-up game is to add another layer to our training. So when I started off, and you'll see me, I use a similar example a lot in my training just because it's easy because I have my hands right here. So if we wanted to add another layer, so let's say our dog is really, really awesome at shake a paw. But when we notice, we notice that they always shake with the right with the with their right foot. Now, typically, what happens is that dogs. Here's what normally happens: is that when we offer our right hand, our dog tends to offer its right foot, cross cross footed. I don't know why that is, but it just is. And the majority of us are right handed. I'm an oddball out. I come in in our in our what used to be our married family my ex-husband and mo both my kids are left-handed I'm right-handed so I'm the odd, ma odd man out but that's what happens so by adding another layer what your next layer might be let's say if your dog if when you asked for shake a paw with the right hand and they gave you their right paw that you say okay now I want to because I have something in mind where I want them to be able to be very clear I want them to give me their left paw. So it's the direct paw, like the Boy Scouts, you know, hand to, 
hand to hand, that like that. That would be your next level. So that's where you would start. It's moving from the layer where any paw would be acceptable. Let's say that that was the first part. Any paw. Now I want, when I put my right hand out, I want your right, your left paw, sorry. Side for side, because they're facing us. So that's the key piece. So there's your why. Why? Because it's time efficient. Why? Because this concept of scarcity building, anticipation, drive, desire, enthusiasm, all that comes from making it a surprise so they don't ever know when training sessions are coming. It's not Wednesday night at 7 o'clock when you get your bag once a week. It's a surprise. Builds enthusiasm. Because it helps make things clear because we put, keep the packet nice and clear and you can add another layer. Moving on, we're then going to look at how would we create a pop-up game because obviously we're creating a game that's start to finish is under five minutes. So we're not creating a course. We're not creating a huge package. So what's the first thing that we want to do? The first thing that we want to do is what do we have available specifically in relation to canine conditioning that we can use to create our pop-up exercise and you heard me talk about the climb uh, at the beginning so what is one what is our one two or three things that we have available that we can use in our pop-up game and I encourage you when you're just starting out to stick with one when I start doing um, my pop-up games in this particular studio here I have uh, one two three four four fit planks I have two fit bones two balance pads and five 14 inch balance discs I almost always start with a balance disc because this is what I happen to have here but it's nice it's simple it's easy to, easy to come out so that's what you want to think of what one thing or two thing or three thing that I could put together because you don't want to have a lot of you don't want a lot of your training time taken up setting up and putting away because you'll use it all up not that you need a lot but you want to be as efficient as you possibly can so what one thing do you have that you're going to be working with so you know whether if you don't have canine conditioning equipment and you're just doing this from a dog training perspective um, do you have a yoga mat that you can just bring out so it's a non-slip surface you can work on? Do you have um, a perch that you could work with? You know, I always recommend the, there's a, a, a short Ikea perch. It's $7. Do you have a pillow? Do you have an ottoman? Do you have a box? Anything like that. That's what you want to look at. What do I have that I can start building my pop-up game with? Second. What, now you're going to look at what is the goal of the pop-up game? Improve or enhance something. So, let's say we're doing it with the sit. No, let's do it with the down. That's, I love the down because typically in the majority of dogs, down is slow. Down is a compliant behavior. Lie down. Down is not a fun behavior. You do see it become... A more fun behavior when it's when it's trained in the concept of rally obedience because there's a time to it and also it's it's more games oriented but let's talk about that I have a down and when my dog goes to lie down and this relates to conditioning as well because stand to down is an awesome exercise it's a it's a push-up so when I first started using down as a pop-up exercise my goal was for the down to become to be faster than it, the last down that they did. And I went in with an objective that I wasn't going to do any more than five, um, but I wanted them to be faster. Now, I'm not talking faster as in the dog goes uh, like that, and the next one be whoop. I'm talking if they went like this, that the next one went like this. See, it's subtle. So you've got to remember that you're looking to improve or enhance it. Okay, let's stay with the down. My dog goes down, but he rolls over under his hip. So I'm talking about a down in a sphinx position. So my dog does that, but I want to start improving it so that it's into 
a sphinx position. That would be my enhance. I want to improve the position, improve, but I'm also going to enhance the body condition. Okay. The third thing that we look at when we're looking at creating is, is there a new skill that I want to teach? So let's say we want to teach pop-up, just because we're talking about pop-up. My dog doesn't know pop-up. If you guys know the, the history of Ducati, Ducati is my, my pop-up queen. She has always, ever since she was a baby, uh, popped up. She's the Gordon, Gordon Setter. She'd, most dogs, when they come up on something to look, like fences, they put their feet on the top of it. She actually pops up like this and just hangs like that. And she's always done that. This is 77 pounds of a very athletic Gordon Setter. Since a baby, your dog has a nose touch. So nose touch being nose to the hand touch. So now you want to teach a pop-up because there's a lot of value to pop-up. And we'll, you'll, you'll hear me talk about pop-up in down the road when we do um, a training on something we call the happy skill. Happy skills. So you want to train pop-up, for example. That's what you want to go into. What is a new skill? That's super, super key. So you've got your equipment. You've got, I want to improve or enhance something, which is not the same as doing a new skill. New skill is something, is not, is not this. It's completely, it's completely different. It's a next level. And the fourth thing that we want to look at when we're creating our pop-up games is a way to get the card off the board is maybe I want to get rid of something something that I don't like and I typically if you don't like it it's a bad habit something that they do that I'm not really happy with and I it could be something physical I don't like the sloppy sit and the sloppy sit, if you're not familiar with it, is the sit rolled over on the hip, legs splayed out. It's not a nice, tidy, correct sit. I don't like that. I'd like to see if I could, uh, I could improve that. And that sort of falls into that improve or enhance. But it's a bad habit down there. Um, another one is I want to, I want to change the dog from charging the door to where the dog just lies quietly when we go to open the door instead of getting ready like a, like a crazy dog ready to take on the entire world right at the door. So that would be a habit that I want to get rid of. Is it easy, is it easy to do with pop-up games? Oh, you bet. There's so many ways. In fact, um, moment's number one skill. His default behavior is a skill called backup. And we're going to talk about that one down the road too because there's a number of ways to train backup, but I have yet to see a dog whose default behavior is not sit. His default behavior is backup. Super valuable. But that was trained through a series of pop a series of pop up games. So we'll talk about that. So that's important. You want to get rid of those anything that's a bad habit. You want to, you know whether it's a physical bad habit, whether it's a, a barking, whether it's a um, and nipping when you're doing something with them. You can do that all with pop-up games. Now, the last thing is, is what I don't want you to be doing. And the first thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to, whoop, you don't want to put your pop-up game, games, sessions, after meals. Nobody wants, and I'm talking about the dog's meals, and probably I'm talking about yours, yours as well, but the, there's no motivation, there's no drive, it doesn't matter whether you're using food or toys or activity or love or anything like that as a reward, the enthusiasm to train is always lower after meals. You want to be picking times when the dog is enthusiastic, okay? So that's an important one to remember. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, it's pretty obvious. We also don't want to be training when the dog is getting ready for bed and not getting into his jammies or anything like that, but when the dog is dialed down. We all know that they can almost set your, your watch by the time the dog starts to shut down. 
please don't put your pop-up game session, even if that's your key time. If that's the time the dog takes his cues from the house, that everything is starting to set, settle down, then that is not when you want the dog to be doing a session. And the same thing goes for the morning. If the dog is not an early riser, but you do get up early, then you don't want to be working at that point in time. The third one is headspace. So key. I think of everything on this board, headspace is your most important one. You've got to be in the right headspace. Your mental mindset. This is five minutes of pure joy if done right. So you want to make sure, don't bring, your, don't bring your stresses of the day, your challenges of the day, your frustrations of the day, or the things that you, you anticipate. Although you should be starting every day going, what can I get excited about? Because there's always something to get excited about. You want to make sure that you're not bringing that baggage. It's not fair to the dog to bring baggage to the session. So if you're bringing baggage, just go drop the baggage somewhere and don't do your session. Figure out how to fix that so you can do it better the next time. And the last thing that we need to make sure, right, right after headspace. You know, it's funny, the don'ts are probably some of the most important in this session. Do not try to do a pop-up game that you do not have all, and I mean all of the foundation pieces, rock solid in the dog so that they're clear on them, so that they're clean on them, so that they fully understand them. That clarity confidence loop. If you don't have all those pieces in place to be able to do the exercise, then you need to go back and you need to put the pieces that are missing, those missing blocks, into individual pop-up sessions so that you can shore that up and make them work correctly. Now, we have got a, um, we've put together what we call a, a playlist for you uh, that will allow you to start planning out your pop-up games. And once you get that first session, and once you get that one, that first week or two weeks, however long you think you need for that, or however long the dog tells you that you need, uh, and then you can start playing around with it. You can go to a morning, you can go to an afternoon, and you'll see when you look at the, um, at the playlist. So pop-up games, super important and a key piece of any training uh, package that you have for your dog. And it doesn't matter if you have um, an active dog, a dog that goes out and runs with you, does all sorts of stuff like that, an active life outdoors, whether you have a couch potato dog, whether you have a weekend warrior, whether you have a competitive athlete, whether you have a senior, a puppy, or anything in between. All of them can fit into their personalized pop-up games. I hope you enjoy that. Make sure that you comment down below and download that, um, that playlist so you can get started. And I look forward to seeing you, as always, Live inspired, live the unshackled life, and come join us again next week. I mean to you on Thursdays in the afternoon. Bye for now.